Welcome to Charlie's Tales. My name is Charlie Glass and I've been collecting, writing, and telling these stories practically all my life. In September 1958, uh, I was a freshman at the University of Alabama and one of the choices we had to make was I, was I going to be in the Army ROTC or the Air Force ROTC? Well, it was pretty easy for me because I was already learning to fly. I loved to fly, so Air Force was the logical thing. And uh, I, in, the, in that ROTC unit, I met a young man who already had his private pilot's license. And so Jim and I flew a lot of places together. Uh, spent a lot of money doing that, but uh, Jim wanted to jump out of an airplane. Now this was before they called it skydiving. It's when they still called it jumping out of an airplane. And uh, I told him, well, at the Bessemer Airport, uh, I knew a man who had parachutes. And so uh, we called him and we made arrangements and for $10 a piece, he would let us jump w using his parachutes. So we jumped in a little Cessna 150 at Tuscaloosa and we flew up to Bessemer and we went in and he put the, he put these parachutes on us and he was very proud of these parachutes. They were genuine U.S. Army surplus T-10 parachutes. Now I had no idea what a T-10 parachute was but he liked it and so if we were going to jump that's what we we're going to have to use. So he put the parachutes on us and he said now we can't do this without some training. And so he took us out to this picnic table and we climbed up on the picnic bench and we put the balls of our feet right on the end of the picnic bench and he said now when I give you the signal when I tell you to jump you step backwards and land on your feet and so I climbed up on that on that picnic bench and he said okay jump and I jumped and sure enough I landed on my feet well we did that five or six times and he said, I think you boys are ready. Now we need to go to the airplane and do a little training out there. So we'd go out and he had this old Cessna 172 that was, uh, he had removed the right hand door and in the door post he had drilled a hole and there was an eye, uh, an eye bolt in there with the ring on the outside. And he said, now you will attach your static line to this O-ring. And he said, now we're gonna practice getting in and out of the airplane. So we sat in the right seat and he said, now what I want you to do is take your left foot, set it out on the step on the wheel strut, reach down and grab the wing strut, then swing out with your right foot, put it on the wheel where I'll be holding the brake so it won't spin, and then with your right hand grab the, the, the wing strut. And he said, then when I give you the signal, you do just like you did on that picnic bench, you just jump back. Well, we did that five or six times, and he said, okay, let's go. So I climbed in the back seat, Jim gets in the front seat, and, and we took off. Now, he, we got up to where he was going, wanting to put us out, and he told Jim, he said, okay, get out there. So Jim attached his static line, and he climbed out on the, on the wheel strip, uh, step and, and got out there, and the guy says, jump, and boy, he, boom, he was gone. I mean, it just instantly, he was not there. And so he flipped the seat back down on top of the seat, and he said, okay, get on up here. So I started climbing up over that thing. Well, the first thing I had to do was I had to attach my static line to that, that eye bolt. It was outside the airplane. And, and I'm reaching out, trying to figure out how to get, my, get that hook on that thing, and I finally got it all hooked up. And he said, okay, step out there on that step on the wheel strut. Well, the problem we had was when he folded the back of the seat down, it made the seat about three inches higher than what it was when we were practicing. So I was having difficulty getting my foot on the wheel step, and on, on that step on the wheel strut. And, and so I finally got it out there, got my foot close to it, and I leaned out and I, I grabbed the, the wing strut and I got my foot on that thing. And he said, okay, swing on out. And I'm thinking, what in the world am I doing? This is crazy. And he said, get on out there. 
So I, I thought, well, it's now or never. So I swung out, got my foot on the on the wheel, and sure enough, he was holding the brake. And I got I grabbed the wing strut. I'm holding on that thing, and it's just vibrating like crazy. And I'm bouncing. My cheeks is just filling up with air. Uh, it, it, we had no goggles. We had no helmet. We're just out there, and. So I'm, I'm hanging on this thing, and it's just shaking like everything. And, and he said, jump. I said, no. He said, I said, jump. I said, no. And I think he thought I was going to get back in and want my $10 back because he turned the brake loose on the wheel. And when he did, the wheel spun, and I fell off. Now, when I ran out of rope, the parachute began to open. And he had told us, he says, now when you get a full canopy, and at that point I was praying for a full canopy. He said, when you get a full canopy, all you have to do, if you want to move right, you just pull down on the right side and the parachute will go that direction. If you want to go left, you pull down on the left side and the parachute will go to the left. Well, what he neglected to tell us was that when we got out, we're hanging underneath that parachute, and, and the parachute is going this way. And I'm, I'm spinning in the air. I'm hanging up there in the middle of nowhere. I'm looking down, and I can't see anything but the earth going in a circle. And, and then I spotted another parachute down there, and Jim was coming down right on the runway there at the old Bessemer Airport, which at that time was an old grass strip. And, and uh, so I, I started coming down. I finally got this thing slowed down where it wasn't spinning, and, and I'm, I'm looking, and I was beginning to get kind of comfortable. It was pleasant. And, and I got down, and we were coming down right on the runway. I mean, it wasn't anything I did. It was where he put us out to, to get us there. And so just as I get about three or four feet above the runway, a gust of wind came along. So here I am hanging underneath the parachute. The wind came in and it did this with us and it dropped. The parachute hit the ground, filled up with air. My rear end hit the ground and knocked all the air out of me. I couldn't get my breath. I couldn't get up. I couldn't stop the parachute. And, and there were a couple of guys that were gonna be at the end of the runway to help us when we landed and they realized what was happening. So here they are chasing me down the runway and they finally got the parachute stopped. They got it where it could, could do something, and I got my breath back. I, and I, I was just beginning to stand up. I was just, my knees were just, just shaking like everything. And Jim came running up, and he says, wasn't this marvelous? I said, you have got to be kidding. He said, man, this is great. I'd, do, I'd love to do this again. I said, well, if you got $10, he'll take you up and do it again. And... Uh, uh, but he said, well, I think we ought to do it again. I said, there ain't no way to this. I, I've done it once. I don't ever intend to do it again. The next time I jump out of an airplane, that sucker's going to be on fire. And he said, well, I think we are really ought to do it. I said, nope, nope, this is it, man. I've done it once. That's all I'm going to do. So that was our adventure for uh, jumping out of airplanes. And I do hope you enjoyed the story. Uh, it's pleasant now, but it was frightening back then. Uh, and if you enjoyed it, I, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to our channel. And if you liked the video, hit the like button on there. Leave me a message and I promise you I'll get back to you. Uh, and in the meantime, we will see you on the next video.